Hello and welcome to the YouTube Symphony Orchestra Masterclass for the Cello. My name's Rebecca Gilliver and I play principal cello in the London Symphony Orchestra. We're going to start with William Tell, appropriately enough, because it does usually start a concert, which is certainly a rather scary moment for any principal cello. You start completely alone and the first two bars is just you, but relax, because on the third bar, there's a lovely choir of your colleagues, all the other cellos come in and play a beautiful harmony with you. So although in an audition situation you feel incredibly lonely on those top Bs, you just need to think of the harmony that's going to be coming in behind you when you're actually playing it in concert, and that'll inspire you and give you courage. So I'll just play the beginning all by myself. Now, because we haven't got much time, I'm not going to play all through those Bs, but in an audition situation, you must, and you must make sure they're exactly the right length and beautiful sound all the way through. So skipping to the third entry of the first cello, there's a lovely moment here because the, the third cello plays this line. And then you get to come in. And that's where everybody else comes in. Now these three G sharps keep coming back. They come back four times. Now those G sharps come back four times. And each time is a different harmony in the other cello. So you must choose a color that fits the harmony they're doing. The first time is just a beautiful E major. The second one is a bit different. So the harmony is a bit more involved. The third one is marked pianissimo and the harmony is even more beautiful. And finally the last one. So each time you play those G-sharps, you've got to hear those harmonies in your head and create a colour, any colour you like, that's going to fit those harmonies. OK, the trills, again, I'm not going to play them now because we don't have time, but again, in audition situation, play them right through. Don't cut a beat. And finally, it's that shift at the end that brings out a bead of sweat on any principal's forehead. Um, I played it once with the World Orchestra for Peace and the cellist there was Sandro Lanfrancini who is the principal cello in La Scala and he must have played it about 10 times in rehearsals and concerts and every time he hit that top shift absolutely perfectly and I was so impressed I asked him what's your secret Sandro and he had a little think and he said just before the shift I think about something else completely. And there's a lot to be said about that if you sit there worrying about where your hand is going to go. Okay, it might work, but if you're really worried about it, it might not. So do the practice. You need to practice that shift until the cows come home. And then when it comes to it, maybe think about your bow or just the music itself and don't worry about the shift. If you miss it, it's not the end of the world, although it might feel like it to you. Brahms' second symphony, the second movement, the wonderful cello soli. This excerpt is used all the time by the LSO. We use it for every single audition for rank and file. And the reasons behind this is it shows a huge amount about your playing, both mentally and technically and emotionally. Um, I always approach the piece with the same two questions. Firstly, what did Brahms mean by poker forte? It's definitely a rather ambiguous marking and Brahms uses it quite a lot. Offhand, I'm not sure if anyone else does, but uh, perhaps someone on YouTube can let me know if, if they do, and then I'll stand corrected. Anyway, what does it mean? It's not forte, obviously. It's not a big, brash forte sound. Equally, it's not piano, and it's not that kind of compromise mezzo forte either. I think maybe the key is in the espressivo marking, which comes afterwards. Um, the character needs to be... It has to have real intention and expression behind it and I can imagine Brahms agonising how to describe what he wanted and therefore so should we as we approach the piece. 
This leads me to another question, which is what Boeing to do. And when you come to an audition, you may well have Boeing marked in the part. It's always best to do the Boeings there. But you also need to be flexible. The LSO parts have been changed so many times, the notes have almost been rubbed out. Um, today I'm splitting the Boeing, which is a little compromise, but for me it gives a better sound. Um, the most important thing, I think, in this piece is the sound, that you don't ever get a squashed, hard sound, but an incredibly warm and... Um, What's the word I want? Kind of supported, warm tone. I'm just going to play the beginning. Of course, you could also do it if it was a slightly faster tempo with just a single bowing. really worth practicing all in one bow split bowing some bowing is long some split just be flexible okay the difficult thing maybe technically about this is to shift up to the B um, make sure your hand is really prepared for that top B and that when you get there your left hand is really balanced on the note and you can give it a nice warm vibrato it's really worth just practicing where you want to be on the cello before you worry about how you're going to get there so that you know that's the position you want to be in. So the quavers in bar three are quite different to those in bar six. Obviously it's poker forte in bar three and bar six is piano, so it's a big expressive difference. But also bar three is parlando, the quavers. <laughs> Whereas in bar six, it's very, very legato. So that your bow is really, really smooth. As with the bowings, your fingerings are your own choice. You can decide whether to shift up and down the string or just go across. It's very much your own choice. Personally, I quite like going across quite a lot in this piece because I find the intervals are more telling. But it's nice also to be expressive and have the odd, um, the odd slide or shift in. OK, well, I'm just going to play the piece now. Um, another very important thing about it is that it feels like one huge long phrase. So I'm going to try and do that. that brings us to the end of this masterclass. I hope you've enjoyed it and that you take something useful away from it. Good luck for your audition. I look forward to hearing them all and I hope you enjoy the process. Thank you.